Kudai. How Moshe identifies and is accountable for every bit of material, the gold, the silver, whatever was contributed to the Mishkan, and he shows exactly how it was invested to create the Mishkan. So the Torah tells us, Elop Kudai a Mishkan, Mishkan ho Edus. This is the accounting of the Mishkan, the Mishkan of Testament. Asher Pukad al Moshe. Firstly, it's called Mishkan Eidos because the Eidos is the Luchos, the Torah, which was contained within the Mishkan, which was overseen by Moshe through the communication of Moshe Rabbeinu being the Bar Hashem. Avodas al Levim b'Yad Yisom and Aaron Akohen. The service of the Levim was overseen by Yisom, the son of Aaron. Upsala ben Uri ben Chur the Mat Yehuda. Also, is Kol Hashem Tziva Hashem is Moshe. Sal ben Uri was endowed with Ruach HaKodesh, with divine inspiration, with Chochma, with Das, with Salel, oversaw everything. The Ito Olov ben Echisama, Chamate, Don Chorosh Vachoshev. He was his partner in overseeing that everything should be done correctly. So the Sephardo over here points out, we have all this information regarding the Mishkan. It was Alpi Moshe, it was the summer oversaw the Levim, the Tzalel, Oliyov, everything was done on the most advanced level of Kedusha. And because of this, and also what was the objective, it was Mishkan Ha'edus, it was to contain the Luchos, the Torah. So every aspect of the Mishkan was at the most advanced level of Kedusha, and it was infused with the purest level of intent of Kedusha also. And he says, as a result of this, we find that the Shekhinah, the Divine Presence was there, and even when the Mishka no longer existed, it never fell into the hands of the enemy. It was hidden away in the Mishka. By Rishon, which was built by Shlomo Melech, had the Shekhinah, had the Oron, had all those things, but because they were non-Jews who participated in the building of the Bisham Migdosh, it wasn't the utmost level of purity, therefore, ultimately, it was Nechrav. It was destroyed. By Sheni, which was only as a result of the authorization of Korash, gave the authorization to build the Misa Migdosh, and there were many things which were deficient, spiritually speaking, therefore, it was destroyed, therefore, the Shechina wasn't by Sheni on an ongoing basis, and it was lacking in many things. So what determines whether something has an eternal status and is most effective, and it's the domicile, the location for the Shechina, only if it's done at the most advanced level of Kedusha, where there's no involvement of people who are unworthy or people who are not qualified and not sufficiently spiritualized to be involved in the particular project, what it may be. Therefore, the Mishkan was special. Edus, and therefore the Torah identifies and details and enumerates all the special aspects which related to the Mishka, and that's why it was so special. There's a story I heard over many years ago from Rav Shvadron, he had said, the first part not, but it was known, Rav Chaim who was the Talmud Buvok, who was the primary Talmud of the Goin, of the Vilna Goin, he had an idea, he wanted to build the first yeshiva in Lithuania to accommodate all the, the students of Torah from Russia and, and Lithuania, Latvia. And he came, he was enthused, came to the Vilna Goyen, to his Rebbe, he says, I want to build this yeshiva, it'll be phenomenal, and I'll be able to accomplish this and that, whatever it may be. The Vilna Goyen says to his Talmud, it's not a good idea. At this point, you have to put it on hold. About three years later, he comes back with the same idea, with the same project. He says, now's the time. So he asked his Rebbe, what's the difference between then and today? today? Then you told me, no. He says, then you said it was with an enthusiasm, and you're going to do it. What's going to be, and you're going to bring about? It wasn't with the purest intent. Therefore, I advise you not to. Today, that you're coming, say it's needed, and therefore it must be done. It's being done with a special level of intent. Therefore, now's the time to build the yeshiva, and you're going to succeed. 
So Voloshin was known, world renowned, the greatest Goinim, Tamili Chachomim, came out of Voloshin, Torah, out of Lita, out of Russia, was kept, all came from the graduates of Voloshin, the Talmidim, of Rechaim Voloshin, his son, the Nitziv, Rechaim Briska, this was all Voloshin. And there was another person who wanted to build the yeshiva similar to Voloshin. He hired the best staff, the greatest Talmid Chachomim, and he was going to build, and he built the yeshiva with the best staff, paid the highest wage, that they shouldn't be distracted from their giving their shiurim, and it failed. So the Rosh Hashiva of this new entity, which failed, comes to Rechaim Bolosh and asks him, you succeeded, why did I fail? So he says to him, when you initially were going to lay the cornerstone, tell me, what did you do? He says, well, we did that. We put ads in the paper to tell them the upcoming laying of the cornerstone of the yeshiva, and it would be a Kiddush Hashem, and all the people, the politicians and the community came, and Rabbonin came, and there was music, and it was a Kiddush Hashem. So he says, I want to tell you, in Bavoshan, have we laid the cornerstone? He says, for a week, we said, Tilim. And we shed tremendous amount of tears, and we fasted. And we took those tears and we made the cement and with those tears we laid the cornerstone. He says, that's the reason why Voloshin succeeded. You put hands in the paper, you had speeches, you had politicians, you had music. That doesn't happen that way. It has to be the up from the foundation up, it has to be with the utmost level of the Shem Shamayim. With the ultimate level of purity. If not, the Sultan doesn't let it succeed, regardless of what kind of staff you have, what kind of quality students you bring. The potential will not be met. Therefore, Voloshin succeeded, and your yeshiva failed. The Mishkin, Mahavdil, was a whole different level. Moshe Rabbeinu, Eloz, Esomer, oversaw the Levim, Ketzaleel, Oliyov, everything was a Pi Hashem, a Pi Moshe, diffused with the greatest level of Kedusha. Therefore, it had the capacity to contain the Shechina and everything, and therefore it is and was Nitzchik.